Cool. Well, thank you very much. It's great being here at the, at the, at the Founders Summit. So I'd like to talk to you briefly a little bit about HP's vision uh, for bringing cloud to the enterprise, and then we'll talk some more about some customers uh, and a little bit more about something that, at the end of the, end of the slide. So when we talk to our customers, a lot of things bubble up. And one of the major things that bubble up and has helped us think through what, is, what do we believe about this cloud revolution is that we believe it's open and we believe it's hybrid. And that's one of the reasons we're so excited about being in the Cloud Foundry, participating in this community. Our customers are always telling us that we want to go faster and they want to move their application development teams and enable them to move faster and faster. When I talk with CIOs or talk with leaders of infrastructure for these large companies, they talk about the roadblocks that are in their way. And when a team wants to try an experiment or wants to try something innovative, it takes days and weeks to bring their infrastructure to place, and it takes a long time to get the CICD systems going. So when they hear about the kind of application development processes that can get enabled by Cloud Foundry, they're very excited. And as we move forward in the, in the, in the industry, we think about open as being more than avoiding vendor lock-in. It means about getting embedded in an innovation cycle that is taking over the industry, whether it is other open source projects, whether it's OpenStack, which we're deeply involved in, the amount of innovation and the amount of evolution that you see going on on a daily, weekly basis is truly amazing. And launching the foundation has really been exactly the right conditions for Cloud Foundry. It's really opened up this community, and it's great to see the amazing growth we have here. And I can see that when we come back, we're going to have to open up the back part of the room and, and double the size again, which is truly awesome. So we've been at, at this about a year. Um, and you know, one point, version one, uh, we, customers have some perceptions with that, right? So we've, it's generated perceptions around lack of build packs, the ecosystem was still, still booting up. And so as we talk to folks, they're very excited to see what's going on in two. And when you talk about version three, uh, people's eyes light up. And so all the work that's going on there, I think is, is, is absolutely exciting. Now getting the foundation in, in place uh, is enabling us to get better, clearer roadmaps. And from an enterprise adoption perspective, because uh, I'm, I'm an ex-dev, and tons of us are ex-devs in the room or devs. It's like, why do we need these roadmaps? They want to know what we care about. A roadmap is an expression of the kinds of problems that we want to solve or that we believe we're going to be solving for our customers. Some of our customers have got 10,000 application developers, and they've got huge teams. They're trying to help make those people more effective and productive. So they're trying to figure out, what do I need to do in the next year, 18 months, to intersect what this community is doing? It's because they want to make investments that aren't right in our path. They want to make investments to integrate in, to make use of the kind of technologies that the teams here are building. And with that, and with that we see there are going to be more, uh, more clear cadence around roadmaps. So one of the things that we're excited about what we've been doing uh, within HP is really strengthening the bindings between OpenStack and Cloud Foundry. Uh, big believer in making sure that the infrastructure layer and the PaaS layer can work really well together. We believe that the interconnections, we, we offer Trove, in our, uh, Trove, which is the, the MySQL database as a service, inside our Foundry offering. We believe that increasing those connections means that we can make better use of the hardware and infrastructure uh, to move things forward. So one of the things that kind of people ask about is like, so uh, exactly what is the definition of CF? Because this is a, as a new thing, people are trying to understand where is the definition lie? Is it within the implementation? Is it within the API? Where, do, where does the community want to take it? And having, I've spent uh, my entire uh, OpenStack uh, life cycle, uh, I, was, I was at the beginning of OpenStack, and we had exactly the same problems. OpenStack, the, the, the code is the definition of the product. So there's challenges to figure out, do we want to do that here? How, do we, how important do we want to make the API definition versus the implementation definition? You know, uh, when I talk to customers, there's a bit of confusion, especially going on with the, con the huge momentum that containers have. And containers, the container technologies, whether Kubernetes and Mesos, uh, Docker, and, and many more, uh, making sure we've got a clear perspective in this community is what is the relationship? How do we act? How do we interact with them? 
what does it mean in, as these, both these uh, communities evolve, and they're evolving very rapidly. You think about where Cloud Foundry was a year ago, where Docker and containers were a year ago. They're both on this tremendous development path to accelerate application developer productivity and to enable cloud native applications. And promoting the work of, our, of the foundation with more than 50 companies involved, it's absolutely uh, a huge moment, a movement at this point. Uh, so one of the things I like to talk to you about is I, I spend a lot of time talking with our customers and talking with CIOs and VPs of infrastructure and application development. And I always start to ask, like, what problem are you trying to solve and why? And tell me what would make a great year for you and what, what is your CEO trying to ask you to do? And what I end up with is a lot of great conversations, not about the technology and not about the product, but about the problems we're trying to solve. Because I think that's half the work. And so some of the, the feedback that I've gotten is that the enterprises need features that are behind the far, they're, that are enabled to be behind the firewall. They're completely isolated from the internet. They don't wanna be able to download, build packs. They wanna be isolated. They wanna be able to build um, packs where they can integrate in their own systems in to make that a first class citizen within Cloud Foundry. They really, really like the fact that HA is taken care of for the application developer, but they want to make sure that the ops people have a good way to manage scaling and HA right out of the box. And those extensions, whether they're service packs or brokers, enabling them to tie into the hundreds of interesting algorithmic systems they've already built to make those things accessible into their own systems, they want to bring that to the application developer, because that's right now what they've got to do is they're handcrafting to the tools for the application devs. When we think about uh, other aspects of it, with the Java development teams, uh, with .NET teams, and, and I, as I look about probably 40, 45% of our enterprise customers are running .NET. So it's a huge amount of, amount of effort. And so what we see in that is we see, we've seen a, a moment where we've got the ability to uh, bring .NET to Cloud Foundry. And that's what we've done today. So today we've released development platform version 1.2. It's actually in production, it's on our public cloud, and you can try it out. Right now, enterprise can developers can de develop and deploy cloud native applications on V2 natively. So we offer native.net dot, native support with Windows DEA droplets, bring your own Windows license, Visual Studio integration, MySQL, I'm sorry, Microsoft SQL Server integration. Uh, Got to say something wrong. That's next week when I'm talking at OpenStack. Uh, and application development, application development tools and technologies, integrating in with your IDEs. So whatever ID you have, we connect into that. So we're very excited about how this is going to really bring that forward uh, and enable the enterprise developers to be, make more full use uh, of Cloud Foundry, of the applications we have. We've also tightened the integration between uh, the OpenStack and the, the PaaS layer of Cloud Foundry. So we, we make Trove as a first class citizen. We allow Cloud Foundry and OpenStack operators and admins to manipulate and control those technologies. And so it's, it's a very nice tight binding between the application uh, lifecycle management and the actual underlying paths. So that allows us to really make sure that uh, developers can work within uh, SQL Server, provide self-service database and database resources, and basically eliminate the need for, oper for operators to be able to manage these, these as containers. So the other last part about this is we've got all the SDKs and the .NET toolkits. So within Cloud Foundry, we've got the, we've got, um, we have the Visual Studio Explorer, and within the IT operations side, we have with the ability to be able to basically have those managed very well. So with that, I'd like to just give you one more, one more thing, but that's really not, not all we've got. So we've open sourced all of this work. It's on GitHub today. Uh, it has absolutely contributed all back to the community. Um, you can do a quick developer trial on our public cloud, like I said. And we're really proud members of this community. We're proud to have this as part of 
uh, being accepted uh, into, into the foundry. Um, and really, I want to give a big thanks out to the, the HP development team, which I think some of you guys are back over there. Thank you so much for all the work that you guys have done. So really, thank you very much for all the, all the, the time and effort. And I'm going to hand this over uh, back, back to Sam.